Hello friends, this video on classification of elements part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 14. So let's talk about the transient periodic table for the physical properties. So as you move from left to right, please note left to right and also top to bottom. We see some variations in and also top to bottom. So we'll discuss both. Bottom. We see variations in, we'll uh, study the variations in atomic radius, ionic radiations, ionization enthalpy, electron gain enthalpy, and also electronegativity. There are other trends also, for example, metallic character, right? Non metallic character. Those things we've already learned in class 10th, so we won't be doing that. So the, the main uh, five uh, properties which will be dealing with physical properties, which will be understanding the trends are. Atomic radius, ionic radius, ionization enthalpy, electron gain enthalpy, and electronegativity. So let's start with the atomic radius. First thing, calculating atomic radius is very difficult. Why? Why? The first thing is very small. It is an Armstrong. Also, the elect the electron. If you see the structure as we discussed in the atomic st uh, structure chapter, we have something called nucleus. And then there is a high probability distribution of electron, right? There is a high probability distribution. There is no concrete line which says that the atom ends here or the atom starts here, right? It's all the probability cloud. There is no sharp boundary. There is no sharp boundary. No sharp boundary. So the reason why calculating atomic is difficult is first is the atomic size is very small. And second, there is no sharp boundary where the atom ends, right? So it's all the electron cloud so that's why calculating radius is uh, difficult but again scientists we have are smart and they have found the ways to uh, get the electronic atomic radius so they have found some covalent or metallic radius in fact there is something called van der Waal radius also which we will again study in the next chapter so in case of uh, non-metal right they can share electrons for example, we have chlorine, chlorine, so they can share electrons, correct? So if they can share electrons, chlorine, if you see, it has seven valence electron. Three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This guy also has seven electrons, valence electron. Three, two, five, six. They can share one electrons, right? So they can become Cl2. So in that case, when the sharing happens, they can form a covalent bond. And you can also uh, any way get the covalent radius, right? So you need two non-metallic, and this sharing happens only non-metallic elements. So we can just find the uh, distance, half the distance between the two atoms. You find the example you have chlorine, you have chlorine here. So if they merge something like this, you can find this total total distance, and you can divide by two, right? Because the two nucleus you can find nucleus is something which is prominent. So you can find the decimal between two nucleus and just divide it. So we can we get the radius of the covalent uh, non-metallic elements. But for uh, metallic elements, they don't uh, believe in sharing, right? So for those things, uh, we have this crystal uh, crystal bond. So they they form generally crystals, and they can find the internuclear distance between the two metallic cores in the metallic crystals. So they they form the crystal shapes. They are two metal crystals and they are separated, but they are in the crystals. So they can here again also find the difference in the between the nucleus of the two uh, metallic core and they can divide by two. Uh, anyway, we'll study more on deep on these two uh, topics, finding the atomic radius in the next chapter. Thus, understand that there's something called atomic radius which is difficult to find because it's very small and there's no sharp boundary. So scientists use a different ways to find atomic radius. So for non-metals they use covalent radius, for metals they use uh, metallic radius, for uh, they also use van der Waal radius, we will discuss all this later but just understand something called atomic radius and the trends varies, right? And uh, these atomic radius can be measured using x-ray or other methods. So the atomic size generally decreases across a period. So if you go from here to here in a period, the atomic size generally decrease and within the vertical column the atomic radius 
increase. So, uh, why it is like this? So, if you see the reason we gave is, so if you're going in the same period, if you're going in the same period, right, there is no extra shell added. In the same shells, we add electrons. Correct. Also, the proton charge is increasing. The proton charge is increasing. If you go from here to here, the proton is increasing. Correct. I'm going from here to here. The proton is increasing. The proton is increasing. The charge of proton is increasing. It is able to attract electrons more. This guy is able to attract electrons three times in terms. Right? So one time, two times. Guy is able to attract three times. So the charge of proton is increasing, and the proton can attract electrons more. So the overall atom shrink. See, the nucleus is increasing. The nucleus size increase. The number of, number of protons increase. Since the number of protons, since everything, if you see the atom is controlled by the nucleus. Nucleus is the one which controls the electron cloud here, right? The electron jumps here and here. The nucleus controls that. So the nucleus is increasing, but the shells are not increasing. The same cells, more electrons are added. Same same cells means same area the electrons are added. So the electrons are getting attracted more by the proton, the nucleus. So it is getting shrunk. So if you go across a period, the size decrease. Hope you understand this. If you go across a period, the proton is becoming more positive and it attracts electron all the more. And it attracts more because the electron are in the same zone, same reason actually. Here in this reason only, the more electrons are getting added and they are getting attracted more by the nucleus. But if you go down the periodic table, here also the protons are increasing, right? But here is extra thing happening. The extra thing that is happening is there are new shells getting added. For example, this guy has one shell, there are two shells here. There are three shells here, right? So with the increase in number of shells, actually, the shielding effect is increasing. So these electron, the, the, here the electrons are not getting attracted so much because of the shielding effect of these shells. We'll ex uh, explain the shielding effect in the few slides where we tell that uh, these uh, shells seals this uh, proton and the these the valence electrons are not getting that much attracted by the nucleus because of the shielding effect of the inner electrons. So because the shielding electrons, these electrons are, I mean, the size is increasing actually. The extra shells are getting added, the size is also increasing. Correct? See, in this case, there is no extra shell. No extra shell. The electrons are getting more, all the more attracted, size is increasing. In this case, shells are getting added, so the size is one thing I want to note is, see, we are talking about covalent radius, metallic radius, and Wonder Wall radius also I have told, right? What's so a Wonder Wall radius is only used for noble gases. So uh, the atomic radius we talk about can be covalent radius, metallic radius, or Wonder Wall radius. So we'll discuss this in the next chart, where Wonder Wall radius is for noble gases. So we'll see some trends in the periodic table for atomic radius. If you see. If you go from lithium, sodium, potassium, this is the same uh, group actually, the same group, so going down, here also going down in the same group. So if you see in the same group we are going, the shells are getting added, the size is increasing, right, same group, here also same group, chlorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, right, they are all group 70 and these guys you know are group 1. So in the same group the shells are getting added at this level. In this case if you see lithium, barium, and boron they are period. They all fall period 2 right. So if you see the cycle of lithium is more, barium is decreasing, carbon, boron, carbon it decreases why? Because no extra shell is added and in the same cells more electrons are added more protons are there, so the protons get more power and they attract electrons all the more, so electron shrinks. Correct. So it is same thing. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, 
get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.